Welcome to another Difference Makers podcast. I'm Marion Dalton. It's so cool to have you with me. You know, I love to just take a few moments every so often and answer questions that uh, people send to me because, you know, I've been a pastor and a coach for over 30 years. So I just took some of the top questions and I just, you know, take five, 10 minutes to answer them for you. Here's one that I get often, and it is, what do I do when I feel unworthy? What do I do when I feel unworthy? Now, I'm going to talk to you from the context of a believer, a Christian, and that would be in a sense of, you know, usually when we're feeling unworthy, we feel like we've disappointed someone or we've sinned against them or we've disappointed God or sinned against God, then ultimately it's the perspective we feel he has of us. But what I want you to realize is um, we as human beings, we are directional, right? Whenever we deal with something, it's cause and effect. It's directional. But that's not the way our Heavenly Father operates. He's relational. That's why he created us in the first place, to fellowship with us all the way back in the garden with Adam and Eve. So God's heart is to be in relationship with us, and it's not what we do right or do wrong. Determine That doesn't determine how he focuses on us and how he loves us, just like if you're a parent, like you would your son or daughter, right? So um, let me read a scripture to you and kind of go with this for a moment. Matthew's gospel, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, says this. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose, and he followed him. Now it happened, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners. Now, you got to realize tax collectors were the lowest of the low because the Romans would choose Jewish men to be tax collectors. But once you were a tax collector, they were not only uh, collecting taxes on behalf of the Roman government, it was like the mafia. Then they got to set whatever they wanted for themselves. And they were usually the wealthiest people in the area, in the city. And they were kind of the dom, you know, the dom, the head of the cartel. They were so bad that their own family members or any other Jews would not allow them to even walk into a temple to worship. They weren't allowed. Their family separated from them. No one that would have normally loved them as family would have anything to do with them. And even spiritual leaders shunned them. And imagine, they wouldn't even let them in the temple, which we would consider our church. So now you're looking at the worst of the worst in the eyes of the Jewish leaders and spiritual folks as well. And again, it says, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. So he says, learn what this means. And now he's given the answer. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, right? For I did not come to call the righteous, but I come to what? Call the sinners to repentance. And so we look at this, Jesus is out for not only uh, to bring us closer to God and to be his sons and daughters, but to bring us in relationship as he is in relationship with his heavenly father. You see, we as humans, we operate, like I said earlier, directionally, but God operates relationally. And as we look at this, we begin to think about it. It comes back to that question I began with, what do I feel when I feel unworthy? Usually when I feel, and probably you, feel unworthy, it's when we feel like we've disappointed God or someone else or someone we care about or even disappointed ourselves to just kind of mess up over and over again. And what happens is unworthiness, that feeling, because I want you to realize emotions are actually energy. If you have a sad emotion, if you're down, you don't have a lot of high, fun energy, right? It's it's putting off an emotion of a down downcast, right? If I'm excited and I can't wait and I got a surprise coming, I'm looking forward to it, what? My emotions are different, right? I'm up. It's a different energy. So it's really in the physicality of how God created us and science proves this that through physiology that emotions are nothing more than energy we emote or put off from what's going on inside of us and what we're thinking and what we're believing. So as we think of it in that terms, uh, unworthiness, that feeling, is something that kind of amens separating us from our relationship with God. It, it wants a, that feeling is a sign of, of, wow, we're not good enough. We don't measure up, right? 
uh, why would God want anything to do with me? Why would my spouse want anything to do with me? So unworthiness, uh, it operates in a way to, uh, so when we realize that it's not through our behavior. So let me say it like this. I'm trying to make it clear for you. Um, unworthiness attempts to separate us from a loving father when we realize that it's not through our behavior that God desires to relate to us, what does it do? It changes everything because unworthiness attacks our identity. But when we realize we are a son or daughter of the father and he is daddy, he is Abba, and he created us all the way back in Genesis 1, right, with Adam and Eve to be in relationship, to be in fellowship with him. The greatest uh, victory Satan could ever have against God is to rob you from him. Because God desires to be with you. Jesus hung on the cross and died. Whether we ever received him as Lord or Savior or not, he hung on the cross and died for us, hoping that we would make that eternal decision. So whenever we begin to identify ourselves with emotions versus our identity in Christ, being children of God, being sons and daughters of God, it puts us on a dangerous territory and then we're riding off of emotions. And if you get on a row of some bad emotions, things just get worse, worse, and worse. So it's up to you and I to choose. We call them around here kind of the little T, which is kind of the little truth, which really is, is anti what God thinks about us versus the big T, the truth, what God says about us and believes about us. And what happens is when we're dealing with these kinds of emotions, and we're dealing with little t, what, what looks factual, right? But it's not the truth. It's a fact, but it's not the truth. The truth is what God says about it. And it all comes back to our belief system and what I believe about myself. Am I going to believe the little t or the big t about me? And whenever our beliefs and our values don't line up properly, it just takes us in a downward spiral. And we can never feel that true intimacy with God that he desires to have with us. And as we think about that, little t is, it may be a fact, or it may be something in your mind or heart or something someone said about you, but we got to go by what the truth says. What does God say about you, right? What, what's his opinion of you? So if we want to really overcome uh, this, con all of us at times will feel unworthy or a little down or whatever, but the way to stop spiraling deep into that is to go back to the word Go back to what God says about you, that, that he loves you, what unconditionally. I love in uh, 3 John where it says, God first loved me, because then I can always go back to that basis, that basis that God first loved me. I don't have to work to love God. I just need to operate in my identity, which is to be his child, his son. Now, when I began to focus on the big T and what the big T says about me, in other words, like Proverbs 2, 6, what's it tell us? It says he's given us all wisdom through the power of his spirit. And you and I can walk in wisdom above these little T's and step, step into the big T and realize that Jesus loved us so much. He came off the throne with his father, paid the price, was punished and crucified for you and I, with no guarantee we would ever come and be his children. So once we become his children, how could we feel unworthy, right? We're, we're, we're in the kingdom as a, a younger brother of elder brother Jesus, our Lord and Savior, but our father is the same father he has, Lord God, right? Yahweh. So what I want you to get is if the enemy can get you to the place where you don't have gratitude and thanksgiving, about who you are in Christ and what he's done for you and what he wants to do through you, then you'll never break off the, the unworthy feeling. The, you'll never break off that the depression you've been battling or that angst you've been battling. But when we get into the real truth of what God says for us, that God so loved the world that he didn't come to condemn or judge the world, but that through Jesus, what Jesus came, what that meant that we might be saved, that we might be brought into his kingdom, soterio, that we might be whole, that we might be preserved, that we might be fulfilled. And so anytime you feel unworthiness, the little T come, think about the big T and have gratitude for all that God's already done for you. Have gratitude that he's never going to leave you or forsake you. Have and Just begin to give thanks and have gratitude and feel the love of God and feel the love of other people that think good things about you. You know, if you have bad thoughts about yourself, you're setting yourself up for depression. You're setting yourself up for failure. No one speaks to you 
more than you. And it's up to us to go to God when we can't <clears throat> solve problems in our lives and also allow him to lead us to others that can give us proper instruction. So that feeling of unworthiness will creep in from time to time. But the question is, <clears throat> what are you going to do with it? So remember, I'm not going to operate by the little T, what might be factual, what might be going on. I'm going to look beyond it and see what's the big T, what's the truth of God have to say about it, and begin to meditate on that, focus on that, and speak that over my life until I, my emotions change, my energy changes, and I'm walking according as the word says I should walk. So I hope that helps you. I want to pray for you really quick and just believe that God would just break off the heaviness, the Bible calls it, that feeling of unworthiness or any angst you have. Father, I just thank you for my friends today. And right now, I just speak directly to that, that unworthiness and that depression and, and anxiety and feeling that they're not enough. I bind that in Jesus' name. And I ask those, Lord, that maybe have fallen away or never knew you, that they accept you as Lord and Savior. And those that are your children, Father, I ask right now that you stir up gratitude in us, love, hope, and faith. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I hope that blessed you, my friends. And uh, just go out every day, make a difference in every way. See you again soon.